OCO, Freethinkers. You're now tuned into the realest historian on the planet. Planet. His brother, he is raising some serious questions. He's here to make you think. What I'm trying to do is get our people to understand that we have been lied to all the way around about our history. history. Can you name any other group of people, no matter their skin complexion, that are being labeled primarily as the name of two continents? Not two countries, two continents. It's up. It's up. That is called a misnomer, which is the act of applying a wrong name to some person or thing. The best teacher you wished you had in school. Have your pens and paper handy and get ready to take notes. Get ready to take notes. I want y'all to check out notes. somebody named Dane down. Calloway. Dane Calloway? Look, at, look into Dane Calloway. He has a lot of information about how this whole shit was told in reverse. Okay, where they say, oh, we came from Africa over here. No, a lot of us was already here. And information that was put together by a man by the name of Dane Calloway, who is also questioning the slave trade. And he's done some remarkable videos on the history of the slave trade in the United States. And he's gone back down the food chain and gone back down the line. And he's realized that a lot of the so-called African-Americans in the United States are not African at all. They're actually Native Americans because the slave Life trade did not happen the way we were told that it happened. It's Dane Calloway. Go and watch this man's channel, man. This dude is phenomenal. I'm not saying African American because they're not African American. They're the Aboriginals because they were the, they were the true Native Americans. Set it on fire, fire. They're the copper colored race. Look up Dane Calloway and watch his fucking shows. That man, I mean, Dane Calloway on YouTube. Oh my God. I mean, he is fucking beyond brilliant. The research he does. Whoo. He goes way deep into this shit. Relax and take notes. It's Dane Calloway on I'm Just Here to Make You Think Radio. 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 Turn it up. Hey. Look. My wife and I, so far we put out three books and they five stars Cause we educating the tribe up Hundred years after hundred years, they'd have lied to us but we wised up The first book got them haters shook Cause it's up on my people take a drive up Memory lane down memory lane, remember everything, watch it line up In the second book, we exposed it all, had them gatekeepers going How but? Predictable, they was fictional All I heard getting that lies piled up In the third book, we was riled up Like a car's engine with his mouths up they the lie that said that we came from Africa when that's where they came from round, bro. Hey, find out all on your own is what I highly recommend and suggest. And if you're looking for us as a concert by me, I highly recommend you the best. Which is my website at the link you see just across the screen. Don't let it miss you. I make it simple. I double down on that black and white. It's too so official. Hey, Oseo Free Thinkers, how y'all doing? Oseo Chu, let me give y'all a round of applause, man. I appreciate y'all coming out, man. I appreciate you joining me today. It's going to be very educational right here, man. Let me uh, shout out to those of you... Uh, that have been clicking the like button and sharing the videos with those you know. And shout out to those supporting the content and myself through donations, tips, pledges, and memberships. I appreciate you all. And thank you all for your generous contributions. Behind the scenes, my wife and I have been working on completing other informative projects that will be released here shortly for your benefit. And one of those projects is a brand new book set to release this next month coming, which is August. I'll be providing more details about it soon, okay? Be on the lookout for that. <clears throat> so, today, let's get started with today's topic of discussion here. We will continue with our series concerning the gatekeepers who are against the people. Now, just a quick reminder. <clears throat> in part one of this segment... Hold on, let me um, let me get some water here. In part one of this segment, we discussed how the uh, information about these particular secret societies was detailed throughout 
many documentaries I produced here on the channel. I just wanted to bring a lot of clarity to what I was talking about and from a different perspective. If you didn't see that, go back and watch it. That was a live stream uh, that was conducted probably a few days ago. Now, um, throughout the documentaries, my wife and I wrote broader perspectives that in turn exposed the people that would share the same complexion as you and me as the traitors amongst our communities. So in this part, which is, I'm going to consider this part too, in this segment, I'm going to go further into an explanation as to who these gatekeepers are and why their agenda is to manipulate, control, direct, you know, our people away from liberation and nation building, to say the least. And also why they need to be removed from our communities for our people's sake. Okay, especially since these gatekeepers are not for the benefit of our people. Okay, it's go time, Slim. So if you didn't know, you know, if you out there and you didn't know that there are people out there that will look just like you and me, as far as our skin complexion is concerned, selling their souls to the enemies of our people for their own individual. Uh, financial gain or fame and glory and for the benefit of foreigners that hold elite positions of power in the political realm or in some form of religious titles or status okay or uh, power brokers in economics agriculture and even human trafficking <clears throat> just to name a few if you ain't know that now you gonna know you're going to know who these people are. So let me give you a modern example of a gatekeeper uh, that some of you may be unaware of or didn't think to take a closer look at what's right in front of you on your television or cell phone screens. Just recently, the so-called vice president of the United States, Kamala Harris, decided to go to the state of Florida to speak with a crowd of paid actors <laughs> posing as supporters to gatekeep Florida's governor, Ron uh, DeSantis, I believe that's his last name, and the Florida's Board of Education with their decision to construct a new, well, more than one, they, they constructed new guidelines in their curriculums when teaching about the topic of slavery in America to their students in Florida. One of the guidelines, hear me out, one of the guidelines makes it mandatory uh, to teach the middle school students of Florida. Let me get that quote. It says, quote, how slaves develop skills, which in some instances could be applied for their personal benefit. Now, I'm just saying, Notice how Kamala Harris's tweet says America's history must not be forgotten. It must always be taught. There's a reason behind that. They think they're trying to flip this into thinking or to make people think that they're trying to take away the stories of slavery. OK, but that's not the case. If they're saying how slaves develop skill uh, or skills, which in some instances could be applied for their personal benefit. This is just saying that employees learned new skills during the length of their employment contracts and applied them to their lives even after their contracts ended to gain an income by having their own businesses in the field of whatever skills they possess. Which is truthful. If you decide to look at your uh, records of your own individual family members of that time, you'll find it. What's wrong with this? <clears throat> Still, most people are willing to go by word of mouth, leaving it up to anonymous writers, Masonic gatekeepers, and strangers that hold unique titles that are hired by the same enemies that were against the people of that time and still today. 
And then they're willing to go to their graves with it. So now, after this particular new guideline for their school curriculum was made public, the Democrats, civil rights activists, and some other paid actors campaigned to make this guideline of teaching this truth to students a problem. And Carmela Harris spearheaded this non-issue to the media. Let me give you that quote. She said, um, she said that the guidelines or the guideline teaches how enslaved people benefited from slavery. The guideline teaches how enslaved people benefited from slavery, as if that's not happening today already. People benefit from working and learning a new skill, right? Let me play this. Vice President Kamala Harris slamming Florida's controversial new education standards on black history and growing reaction now across the country. ABC's White House correspondent Mary Alice Parks joins us from the North Lawn with more. Mary Alice, good morning. Well, good morning. We've seen some schools, parents, civil rights leaders, and now the White House, too, speaking out against these new curriculum changes in Florida, calling them revisionist and a disservice <laughs> to students. A this disservice. Is unnecessary to debate whether enslaved people benefited from slavery. Are you kidding me? Hold on. Wait a minute. It's not a debate. They just added in everything. Instead of just teaching the children all the wrongdoings and all the bad that occurred, you know, I mean, they, they started to add in some positivity. What's wrong with that? It's not just saying that they erased all the, you know, all the stories or anything like that. I mean, because it is a story. Unless it literally can be proven by somebody that actually pulled up their records of their own individual family and found out that they actually had a contract. Contract of servitude. Indentured. Contract. Indenture is a contract. Don't forget that. Otherwise, we just riding off the stories that the school's giving us anyway, right? I'm, I'm going to get into that some more. Hold on. This morning, Florida's Board of Education under fire after passing new curriculum standards that educators in the state and across the country say try to gloss over the horrors of slavery in the how? United States. How, how are they trying to gloss over that? They just add more to it. They're not glossing over nothing. Included in the new guidelines, a requirement that middle school students be taught quote, how slaves developed skills, which in some instances could be applied for their personal benefit. As some teachers and civil rights leaders blasted the new standards, the vice president traveling to the state to rally against them too. Adults know what slavery really involved. Notice how she said adults know what slavery really involved. Yeah, because you taught them as students <laughs> in school, right? Adults found out by school. They didn't hear that from the elders of their family members. I'm talking about that was born prior to the 1950s. <laughs> it involved some of the worst examples of, of, of depriving people of humanity in our world. What about human trafficking? What about children trafficking? What, what about that? A hundred and fifty billion dollar a year business that's going on right now, and you ain't got nothing to say about that, do you? That's enslavement. Florida's Education Association, a major teachers union, writing in a statement that at the high school level, these standards conflate the 1920 Ocoee massacre, where at least 30 African Americans were killed for attempting to vote, with acts of violence perpetrated by African Americans. Florida's governor. But that's I not that's. Where's the proof of them taking that out? Like, <laughs> they, they, they just coming up with anything now. Republican 2024 presidential candidate Ron DeSantis praising the new standards. But these are the most robust standards in African-American history, probably anywhere in the country. Florida Republican State Representative Bernie Jacques agreeing, arguing the fight is overblown. No one is sugarcoating the idea of slavery. We're committed to teaching 
all of the history, the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. But at the Board of Education meeting earlier this week, community members and parents begged the group to not go through with these changes. Do not, for the love of God, tell kids that slavery was beneficial because I can guarantee you it most certainly was not. Okay, what well, guarantee is that? Show, show us the guarantee. Show us your individual family records where they did or did not benefit from slavery. Then show us the indenture that your family members got individually right now, proving that they were a part of slavery, AKA proving that they were working for some employer as an employee. Cause that's all it was. It was about employment like it is today. <laughs> uh, all this big mouth talking. Y'all see this, how, you know, is gatekeepers out there, especially in the civil rights movement and all over. We're going to talk about that. And of course, these latest changes come after earlier this year, Governor Ron DeSantis also banned the teaching of an AP course on African-American studies. And, and that was called Afro-American studies. And we're going to get into that. And it's very good that he banned that because that was working against our people. We are not Afrocentric. We didn't come from Africa. Y'all running with this story that was told by who? Because it wasn't our people that taught that story. It was people that created these curriculums for these schools that taught that story. That's what the problem is. So them changing, you know, a, a, a particular standard or curriculum, that's not an issue. But some people are making it an issue for a particular reason. I'm going to get into that. Why is a vice president of the United States Corporation <laughs> so worried about a change in a school curriculum of a particular state. She the vice president. What's she, what's she worried about? School curriculums are changed every year. And finally, they want to add more than just the wrong side of things. And that's an issue. And if you take a closer look, you notice that it's... Uh, only an issue for those hired to be gatekeepers of a particular people's liberation. They don't want you to know that people were well off on their own. They want you to believe that slavery was just all bad and nothing more. But yet these are the same people not handing out reparation checks <coughs> for the injustice conducted upon a particular people that they pretend to care for when it's convenient. <laughs> right? Right or wrong? Oh, I didn't get this happened. This happened. But when, but when people ask for reparations, you get quiet, huh? It's go time, Slim. Now, hold on, let me, I'm, I want to play something else. Just yesterday in the state of Florida, they decided middle school students will be taught that enslaved people benefited from slavery. They insult us in an attempt to gaslight us and we will not stand for it. Hold up. Now. I see in here a couple of issues with this short video of Kamala Harris playing. You know, they were they clipped up the White House clipped this up, by the way. Notice how I say in the White House and in the shade Just room. Yesterday. I took this from the shade room's page, but I want y'all to see something, y'all. Look, I'ma play it one more time. I want you to notice something. I'ma point it out. Just yesterday in the state of Florida, they decided middle school students will be taught that enslaved people benefited from slavery. What y'all see? They insult us in an attempt to gaslight us and we will not stand for it. <laughs> Here go a couple of problems. First of all, just yesterday in the state of Florida, look, look, they watch, decided watch your middle eyes. school students will be taught that enslaved people benefited from slavery. Look off. Oof. Look. Oof. They see? insult us in an attempt to gaslight us and we will not stand for it. She was looking at a teleprompter. She reading from a teleprompter. This means that she ain't write this. Somebody else wrote this. 
And also, did y'all hear her include herself as if she or her family members were affected by slavery in America? They insult us in They insult us in an attempt to gaslight us in an attempt to gaslight us and we will not stand for it. And we will not stand for it. That's the see this this is a gatekeeper move. Like she a part of it. This girl ain't black at all. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> this is an action done by a gatekeeper. Because the gatekeepers are considered uh, by their handlers as the talented 10th, meaning uh, that the gatekeepers make up 10% of a said group of people. And their sole duty is to control the other 90% of the people mentally. In this case, her manipulation tactic is to attempt to control the narrative of the people watching and direct them towards a pool of lies as the opposing people of her and her handler's agenda are simply telling the truth. Oh, this is a picture of Kamala Harris's family. Kamala Harris's family is not indigenous to America. Hold up. Her father, right here, her father, his name is Donald Harris. Her father is an immigrant from Jamaica. And her mother, Shayamala Gopalan. I believe that. I'm going to I'm I'm pull it up. That's her name. But she's an immigrant from East Hindustan. All right, now I'm going to show y'all something. Now... Y'all might not be able to get this because you have to pay for it in order to see it, but I'm going to point a couple of things out in this article. Um, this is the New York Times. The article was published September, let me see, September 13, 2020. Okay. It's titled, How Kamala Harris's Immigrant Parents Found a Home and Each Other in a Black Study Group. Now, right there in the beginning of this article, I hope y'all can see this. Let me, let me bring this up a little bit more, just in case. Right here in the beginning of this article, they're speaking about, uh, they're going to speak about Kamala Harris. They open it up with Kamala Harris's father being uh, 24 years old. Okay. Um, let me, hold on, let me try to pull it up on my side so I can read it. Okay. It says... At an off-campus space at the University of California at Berkeley. By the way, this is the same university that created Afro-American studies. Don't forget that this was between 80 to 90% white. Okay? As far as the students of this school. And I'm talking about less than 100 people of color in this school. But they created Afro-American studies and they were not teaching our people that. They were teaching white people and other foreigners. Hmm. Okay, um, so at the University of California, Berkeley in the fall of 1962, a tall, thin Jamaican PhD student addressed a small crowd, drawing parallels between his native country and the United States. He told the group, a room full of black students, that he had grown up observing British colonial power in Jamaica, the way a small number of whites had cultivated a native black elite in order to mask extreme social inequality. Native black elite, huh? In order to mask social inequality, extreme social inequality. <clears throat> so even though Kamala Harris's father pointed this out to the few so-called black students that attended the university, they still managed to work directly with the native black elites that he mentioned in order to carry out the agenda. 
of pretending that all so-called blacks or Negroes at this time were captured from Africa and then brought to America as slaves to work for the white man that controlled the states and the indigenous population here without explanation as to how exactly they did it. I'm going to show y'all something right here. Those bare bone guys, I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but they're talking about, okay, let me, let me explain something real quick. <laughs> they created a study group called the Afro-American Association, and both of her parents were a part of it. But I just wanted to read this part right here. Those bare bone gatherings, there was a lot of floor sitting, she recalled, when her first exposure to the idea that American black culture had its origins in Africa. We were getting a new language. We were inventing a new language. The first new word was Afro-American. I had never heard it in my life. We were not going to be this thing that had no origin. Negro. We were going to be calling our I mean, calling out our heritage. This is a picture of Queen Elizabeth and where Kamala Harris's mother graduated when she got her degree. Uh, Ms. Gopalin, that's what they call her. Queen Elizabeth II. This is what she was. This is what she received. This is the graduation. 1961, where she received her degree in home science. So keep in mind at this college, this is when uh, Kamala, uh, Kamala's mother and father met after his speech, right after this speech, right in the beginning that they were referring to. Okay. Now where she's from, as far as her mother is concerned was somewhere in Hindustan, but they also indicated in this article, it was a place that was, uh, also colonized by the British. So when Shamala enrolled at the university of California, she became a member of the alpha Kappa alpha. She became a member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha. Kamala followed in her mother's footsteps, enjoying that same sorority during her college years. I'm going to go more into this society later on in the segment, okay? But that's very important to point out. They were both Alpha Kappa Alpha. They're going to call themselves the Kappas. Now, I want y'all to understand that these two immigrants, her parents, Shamala and Donald, were a part of the Afro-American study group. That's what it was called, which helped create the disciplines of the college curriculum called Afro-American studies. Keep in mind, they ain't have no clue about what happened over here. They had to get taught this in school. And them fresh, uh, fresh immigrants just being, just came over here just a few years ago prior to them, you know, joining this college. They ain't got no idea. But yet, they were interested in the civil rights movement for a reason. Okay, now the Afro-American Association is also the same group that established the second Black Panther Party. Uh, you know, just in case y'all don't know, the second Black Panther Party was with... um. Huey P. Newton. Now, in my documentary on my channel right now called The uh, the Breach of the Civil Rights Movement, I tell you all about the first Black Panther Party. Now, this is also the same group that introduced Kwanzaa. Hold on. I'm going to show you right here. Hold up. They introduced Kwanzaa or Kwanzaa as a means for Negroes to celebrate Afrocentric influenced events and ideas that randomly aligned them as being descendants of African people somehow. When this story was not passed down by their ancestors or living relatives of their families to confirm its accuracy and validity. This was strictly a case of vulnerable college students being manipulated and influenced by handlers seeking to recruit intelligent children to conduct their agenda of mass genocide. 
Because only the children can be molded into good slaves as adults. This is why Kamala Harris was set in place to be the gatekeeper. She was the gatekeeper of not allowing the truth to be taught to the children. Because without the children, there would be no adults to control. Hmm. Because without the children, there would be no adults to control. Now, there's another portion that I want to show you all um, uh, concerning the gatekeepers. And I want to continue on with, um, well, actually, it's going to be a different video that I showed you all from the first one. But it's concerning the same person. It's going to be Steve Coakley again. Now, again, let me uh, give my disclaimer here. Uh, Steve Coakley is uh, a great researcher. I definitely give him his props. Uh, you know, I'm not a follower of his or anything like that. I don't, you know, uh, say that I'm, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Like I worship the guy or something like that. It's not that. Uh, I do my thing. You know, I do my own research and I, you know, we have a similarity when it comes to that as far as doing investigative researching, but I give him his props because he did a lot, but it was certain things that, you know, I disagree with or what he was trying to uh, portray out there to people uh, during his lectures and certain things that he may state uh, that I disagree with because he has, again, he has a Afrocentric uh, mindset. So he was, you know, stating things like African people in America and stuff like that. You know, of course, I, I uh, debunked all of that. Uh, me personally, uh, throughout my entire channel and the books that I have out there and the movies that I have out there. Uh, but I still give this brother his props for uh, his research dealing with the gatekeepers, the um, the black gatekeepers especially. Uh, you know, it's going to be the Boule and all the rest of those Greek fraternity and sorority uh, societies that we're about to get into. So I'm going to play uh, this particular video here. And I want you all to take notice to a lot of things that he did say uh, when it comes to that specifically, re referring to the gatekeepers itself. Um, uh, but just bypass the African people in America type of thing, the Afrocentric type of thing. You know, of course, that's not real. But at the same time, you know, we know who he's referring to. Uh, you know, I wouldn't consider him a bad guy because of that. You know what I mean? I wouldn't put his work on a back burner because of what his... Uh, particular take on religion would be, for example, because that is a religious uh, type of way of thinking. And of course, they were indoctrinated in the school. We just went over that, you know, with that Afrocentric mindset. So he was one of them coming out of that particular era. They believed that actually was true, that we were uh, descendants of Africans or enslaved Africans. And no, that's we didn't come off an old boat or nothing like that. That's not us. That was foreigners coming off of boats <laughs> still to this day they coming by planes boats trains <laughs> so you know it's you know some of them crossing borders just to get here that wasn't us i mean you know long story short i want to get into it you know that was my disclaimer but i want to get into it because there is a lot of information that he states in here that i want you to pay attention to and take note of and i might even throw some things on the screen so it could uh, make more sense to you here we go. Let me start it off right now. Brother Steve Coakley. Hey, good evening, brother. One of our great researchers that have exposed the boule, a phenomenon that most good of us in the movement never knew about until you can have brought light, took the uh, sheets off of these Negro clan members and explained to us what the boule is all about. So what we'd like you to do is tell us the history of the boule, who the boule are, the origins, and the relationship to the ruling class. Thank you, brother. A uh, one hour. Uh, thank you for uh, hosting me and my friends here and appreciate you and all your company. Uh, everybody's excessively intense. And that is the demand of the day. Um, this secret society, this black, this particular black secret society that we'll talk about today is the first of the black Greek societies started in 1904. And that word that you said, boule, is actually an acronym. It's a Sigma Pi Phi. 
Sigma Pi Phi 1904 in Philadelphia. And for most of our people, uh, we are not prepped to the responsibility of secret society in the American society. Mm -hmm. And this founding constitution, this illegal criminal enterprise was a Masonic affair. And uh, a masonry is a form of secret society. There are other well-known secret societies like Skull and Bones at Yale, of which this corrupt president and his father were members of. And it is that society that the black society modeled itself after. So when they wrote their first history book, The History of Sigma Pi Phi, by a very noted black author, university president Charles Wesley, who wrote the history book for the Elks, the Prince Hall Masons, uh, National Council of Negro Women, Alpha Phi Alpha, and Sigma Pi Phi. And as a result, in there, in page 28 of its first history book, it noted that it wanted to be like Skull and Bones at Yale. It was right here in Los Angeles at the Good Life on a Friday night. If you remember this time, the NAACP had a convention here and LeGrand Cleague and Marla Gibbs were accused of making inflammatory statements. Working with Dr. Graham's book, The Mannequin Line Motif. Yes, that weekend, the Boule was meeting here, July mm. of 1990. They were having their twice every other year, uh, every other year convention, biannual. And it was a front page article in the LA Times by Karen Grigsby Gates. Mm -hmm who uh, denoted that these elite black men were meeting in Los Angeles at this time. That was the first. I remember sending someone to the car to bring it in, and we read it from the stage of the Boule on July 18th, the day the story appeared, front page LA Times. And I thought it was unusual that the LA Times knew of this society, and I didn't know of them. Now, for our audience to understand, I'm starting off trying to explain to black people the impact of international policy groups like the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations, uh, when the bankers began to take over the American cities in the 70s, New York 75, Cleveland 77, Chicago 79, and here in California, they used Proposition 13 to suck up the surplus out the budget, and bankers began to take over from municipalities, the governing of the cities. Mm -hmm. And as I was scratching and I could not figure out how was there such black complicity in this centralization of worldwide power, the new world order. Uh, it's on the dollar bill, pyramid by white men who never built one, mm -hmm. never saw one. Mm -hmm. But they emulated this symbol. And now comes a series of societies and now comes forth this black one in 1904. As we began to read deeper, it had another analogy in the story to Skull and Bones. It wasn't until we got the history book that the analogy that looked happenstantial in the story in the L.A. Times was actually deeper uh, in the actual history book where they drew attention to Skull and Bones. It denoted that W.E.B. Du Bois was a member and it began to describe uh, people, uh, influential people in the present day society and historically uh, our uh, University, historically black college presidents are primarily coming out of this, uh, advisors to the king. And that word, that boule word can be looked up in a encyclopedia. Boule, B-O-U-L-E, the Greek version. There's a French version that's a coming together, a conclave, the AKA called their convention, the boule. But the Greek word is what we're looking for, the advisors to the king. The lower house of the Greek parliament is called boule. Mm -hmm. And if you know the American congressional system, Senate, six years, more power authority only 100 two per state congress 435 have to run every two years your lower house has less power and authority so it appears as if in finding the boule that within it was a subordination to something else and in its history book it drew attention here's a logo and the, this is a uh, their logo is a grecian sphinx it's an animal and this Grecian Sphinx is similar to a griffin or a gargoyle. Kind of ironically, the Boule had their convention in Los Angeles in 1941. And where else? Griffin Park. And this, this logo, this symbol is a guardian animal. This would be similar to a Rockweiler or a dog or a German Shepherd. They tend to protect something higher than itself. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. 
I went to Howard University, for instance, and a number of so-called Greek societies, fraternities, mm -hmm. as well as in our community, is a number of secret, semi-secret organizations. How is the Boule different than the numerous fraternities and groups in our community? What is the relationship to the ruling class? Father, son, mm -hmm. uh, the a uh, nine, nine make up the axis of the black Greek dynasty. There are four male the societies, four female societies, and the Boule make the ninth one. Mm -hmm. the, the, they are the first 1904 series, the Alphas. Uh, uh, I, I'm not uh, versed in the exact order, but I, I have all of their history books, mm -hmm. and uh, each of them draw attention to things where they got their ritual from. The Deltas uh, draw attention to Freemasonry, said our ritual came from Mary Church Terrell, mm -hmm. whose husband, Robert Terrell, was head of the Masonic Lodge in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Mary Church Terrell, Mary Church, is the daughter of the first black millionaire in America, Robert Church of Memphis, Tennessee. Huge mausoleum to him there. Those societies, uh, those four male, those four female, and the boule, tend to make up a, a aristocracy. We talked in the park about the 10%. Uh, not not in the sense of us in exclusivity, but them in the terms of deputizing 10% of the population to assure that the 90% never catch on. Mm -hmm. And it's very important to know that if you look to Alpha Phi Alpha website, there's Alphas, uh, Kappas, Qs, and Phi Beta Sigma. There's uh, Zeta Phi Beta, Delta Sigma Theta, AKA, and Delta, uh, I'm missing somebody, uh, Sigma Gamma Rho. Uh, if you look to, say, the Alpha website, they brag about being 95% of all black lawyers. Mm -hmm. Now, the Alphas are 95% of the black lawyers. What does that leave the Kappas, the Qs? Okay, now we're in the 90s. They claim to be... Uh, now, by the way, y'all do remember, uh, you know, that the argument that me and James, a.k.a. Judge Joe Brown had, and I forced him to come out and state that he was Alpha for Alpha. Okay, and I exposed that and you also heard during that conversation that he was trying to recruit me three times. These people do exist. Oh, and by the way, he's a lawyer. 65% uh, of the black accountants, uh, the lawyers, the doctors dominating. And it may be that our professions are dominated by people in the Greek societies. At Howard, there was a student that I tried to help get a doctorate in engineering. Very exclusive about giving them out. Mm -hmm. If you get one, you're set for life. Morgan State, Howard are very exclusive. Took big money from governments to make engineers, but the brothers weren't, they weren't coming out. And when we got deeply involved, uh, we found how close knit, how selective the professional process is. So he ended up at the patent office. He was a kappa. He said, we have 15 blacks, one female, 14 brothers, and all 14 of us are kappas. Only kappas going to get in here. And, and there are jobs all over where we think we're applying for something fair and open. But I would suggest that the ruling class recognized this was a very significant period, Dedon, when they decided that they would give a college degree mm. to a person of African ancestry in America who after Reconstruction should have been pretty pissed off. Mm. And so they were very weak about to Africans in America. Only 2,000. So there was this thing they went through, a, a born man versus the made man. The born man, the king and the queens of Europe, uh, had to deputize people to colonize the lands, the Columbuses and the uh, Cecil Rhodeses who went to Africa. They weren't the aristocracy, but they fought to be gladiators and colonists and explorers. The Lewis and Clark, who were masons, uh, these men used the societies to advance the, the wishes masons. of the ruling class, and they set up a system, a circle within a circle, within another circle, each circle protected the circle within it. Mm -hmm. So when you look to that Boulay logo, you see there's a urn, there's an animal with the wing of, of the bird, the well, tail of a lion, and, and it's got an urn, and it's got its paw over the urn, and it says in the history book number two by Hobart Jarrett, that in the urn are the names of the people who are chosen to lead the state which suggests that part of the society function is not to make known who the people of power and authority are. Who the people of power and authority are. The people of power and authority are. And that will be their sacred knowledge. Okay. Now, right here, I was pointing out to let you know that LeBron has a modified version of it, except for his is holding on to a shield, meaning that he's protecting 
are the Boule people. Okay, but this is tattooed. This is real. You can look this up. This tattoo right on his chest. Just as an example. So, so in essence, what you're saying is that the Boule represents the buffer class, the petty bourgeois, the compador buffer class that manages workers, peasants, students, and middle class in many ways, mm -hmm. and are paid well for that. And they receive their direct orders from a European capitalist class. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. 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 So if you were to look to today, where Boule members like Vernon Jordan, who is uh, managing director of Goldman Sachs, he took He's Bill Clinton now. to his first Bilderberger meeting in 1971. The black man took the white man from Arkansas to the big international meeting. Mm -hmm. Vernon Jordan, former head of the Urban League, who groomed Ron Brown, uh, who then went on to become Secretary of, uh, uh, of uh, Commerce, killed in a plane crash, murdered, mm -hmm. um, because Boule are considered domestic. Martin King was Boule. Look at the relationship between Martin and Kwame over going against the war. You don't hear anybody in the African Center community primarily against the war. Mm -hmm. They're basically accepting it or looking for what they... And we know Kwame, a.k.a. who he's talking about is Stokely Carmichael. Stokely Carmichael was a plant and he was set to infiltrate uh, the civil rights movement once they found out that Martin Luther King was becoming international. He was becoming too big and he was actually changing his narrative and forcing people to go after the government for certain things that was uh, conducted upon our people. That was unfair. And he knew that a lot of the land acts were actually supposed to be for our benefit, but it wasn't. They, they switched it around and gave it to, or handed it to uh, incoming foreigners. He flipped the script and they came after him. Try to get when whites are passing out things like, you know, a grand here, this or that. They don't he, was, he was Alpha Phi Alpha though. Okay, but yeah, his later, like his last three years of his living, he flipped it. To be focused on like that, that money that's being wasted, those billions of dollars. You see, uh, African and Afro African, African community and Af African support the war? They are not, no, 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 I'm just saying, they are not uh, pushing against the war. Yeah. Same way Martin King, I what when, when, yeah, when yeah, April yeah. 4th of no, you're 67, right. no, you're right. You're right. one year before he was yeah. killed to the day, when he came out of Riverside Church with Kwame in a certain tie in the front row, mm -hmm. waiting to hear, because he called and said, you got to mm -hmm. hear this. He comes out against the war. Boule men are told to be domestic not international. Mm -hmm. Mickey Leland was Sigma Pi Phi. Mm -hmm. He tried to stop a starvation going on in Ethiopia, Somalia. He, his plane crashes into the mountain. Congressman from Texas, mm -hmm. he dies. Uh, Ron Brown, uh, yeah, Martin King, oh, yeah, no question, Martin King uh, became international and that became his biggest sin. He was financed by some of the greatest foundations America ever had to offer. Mm -hmm. But if they get beyond the defined limit, Mm -hmm. Then there's trouble, then there's trouble, then there's trouble, then there's trouble. In terms of young people today who are on college campuses who want to join fraternities and sororities, what is your advice? It's interesting, the movie Don't Stomp the Yard. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that was an interesting attempt to try to reconstruct the fraternities and sororities. What is your advice? It's interesting, the movie Stomp the Yard. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that was an interesting attempt to try to reconstruct the options because they are catching hell in the streets. There is a rise of comedic centered, African centered societies that are repudiations of Greeks. And this is on the rise on many of the campuses around. And see, that's the problem, especially, see, during his time period that he didn't know. He didn't know, I'm not going to hold that against them, but during that time period, that was the motive to create these Afrocentric or Afro, Afro-centered uh, curriculums within the schools. But at first, they were being taught to the foreigners. So the foreigners will be able to repeat it. Then they passed it down to our people. Okay? That should let you know that something was up. Why would strangers be telling our stories our real stories if they were actually real because they weren't <laughs> to, to foreigners first and why do we have to you know fight in order for that to become a curriculum that we get taught inside of these schools that's alarming isn't it it's not the fact that they were trying to keep it secret from us it was the fact that they were trying to create it cultivate it you know, butter that thing up, make it sure that it's, you know, going to stick in their brains. 
What's the best way to teach somebody that they're a particular person that they're not? You know, I mean, how can we, uh, you know, craft this lie and leave loopholes to allow those students to use their imagination to fill in the gaps? It's unfortunate, but that's what happened. And a lot of those people were gravitating towards Kemet, for example, as if we came from there. And there's no record of that neither. Okay? And they calling themselves comedic scientists and it's stupid. Stupid. And all the more reason why a lot of those Pan-Africans nowadays are upset with me because I have been debunking them. Okay? And their Afrocentric ideologies. Uh, and a lot of them are part of these Greek fraternities and sororities right now. They are Masons, okay? But they are the lower entity, so they have handlers. They have panhandlers. <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's hilarious, but at the same time, it's the truth, you know? Um, and it's unfortunate that there's people out there that look like you and I that are set to you know, upheld the agenda of a foreigner. And that's what they're doing. And the constant repeating of these lies that we have been taught over these years, ever since the 50s and the 60s, actually, it's a problem. It's a problem that we must correct. We have to eliminate this throughout the curriculums, throughout our communities, and throughout our mindsets. Now, I'm not going to, you know, sit here and say that it's going to happen overnight, but it is happening. And the majority of our people are waking up and realizing that, yeah, not only is history a lie, but the history that we were told was ours is a lie. All of history is a lie. And that's a major problem because it's affecting us presently. Because these same gatekeepers are in the way right now, still to this day, stopping our progression for the betterment of our people, for liberating our people, to building nations, to actually getting back on track to what we had in the past prior to any of this being implemented into our mindsets. We were the businessmen. We were the biggest capitalists of this society. Or should I say business men and women? We were the capitalists of the society. A lot of those bankers and, you know, uh, politicians and a lot of those foreigners were looking at what we were doing previously. Marked it, switched it up, wanted to, you know, make sure that they were involved so they could benefit and they could bring their families over here so they could benefit. They wanted to build generational wealth. Our people are suffering from not having generational wealth right now. I believe I was telling the people the other day that <clears throat> a lot of our people don't know what generational wealth is because it has to deal with our children. This is the reason why it was a constant attack on our community's children. Right now, still to this very day, they know for a fact, <clears throat> for example, if we keep our children inside of our household and teach our children how to gain wealth. You know, each and every one of them, as far as the children are concerned, inside of the household and allow them the opportunity to stay in the house until they stack their money up, okay? Not kick them out as soon as they turn 17 and turn 18. As soon as they finish with college, we kicking them out. You, you turning your nose up and, oh, they got to get out in the world and they got to experience life. It's not about that. That's not how you build generational wealth. It's about sticking with your children and teaching them exactly what they could do, what they should do to succeed so everybody in the family could succeed. And the children could be taking care of their adults once they become adults and those adults at that time will become the elders. They should be taking care of the elders. That money or whatever that that wealth, let me say it that way, because it's not just money. It could be land as well. But whatever it is, whatever's allowing them to prosper financially should be passed down generation after generation after generation. 
Okay? Because there's a lot of things out here that are working against our people. And in most cases, it's our own people that's working against our people the country uh, and many of those fraternities and sororities like the American military were finding reduced numbers questions of hazing and brutality and see that's an important thing about a secret society is the initiation or the ritual which is an act of submission I would never want anyone to underestimate when someone goes on that line and they beat them or they make them do things or unusual things or ridicule them that that act is an act of submission and that's very essential to keeping a secret society in order how do you command that subordination mm -hmm. and uh that as uh, so for today when they're on the campuses they see the boule if you look to the boule journal you can look up uh, sigma pi phi dot net uh you look at their boule journal you see what they play up there the head of everything they're announcing every key position they have their advisor to every person every corporation uh they're the black head of american express you know we can just walk on down the line of those that roles were theirs and only theirs no one got past you know i noticed the harold washington our black mayors were uniquely boule andy young when he was atlanta dinkins when he was new york bradley when he was los angeles but none of those men were able to groom their man. Now, what I'm trying to say is there's a vulnerability in America that has not been exercised by our community because our secret societies have been pledged never to tell us those vulnerabilities. They work for them. They patch them. They protect them. They act like they don't exist, but they serve them. Mm -hmm. And they never utter against them, even never whisper to us. Mm -hmm. If you saw on that boule tape when we were there messing at the convention, mm -hmm. I told my buddies, we're not here to recruit them. We don't want them to be better brothers. We want to war warn them that if they're the guard dog on white supremacy when we jump the fence what you gonna do you gonna bite you gonna fight or you gonna run out and let us get to who we after mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but how do we get to who we after when we got all this wing and wang out here all this distraction mm -hmm. all this misfocusing and then is their complicity in our community when some people kill martin Absolutely. king when some people kill malcolm x did that neutralize our present leadership mm -hmm. who are byproducts of assassination mm -hmm. did this put us in a bind do we have a lot of old paper out there that white folks work when they want to that keep us in a bind that we don't seem to talk back mm -hmm. how can they make 10 billion dollars in 90 days mm -hmm. in an oil company that was broken up when a white woman attacked them in 1911 tarbell they broke them companies up them standard oils and then they brought them all back together exxon got with mobile chevron got back with texaco and all the things rockefeller broke up got put back together let me ask you questions so would you say because it seems to be the common denominator of all the corporations in the system you're talking about is capitalism slash imperialism so that in fact organizations that are anti-capitalist as a, as a theoretical formulation and specifically target these multinational corporations, oligarchies, that is the path of liberation for people and destruction of this economic and political system. And maybe that's why also in this historical period we exist today, you find that very few so-called African nationalist or progressive organizations are anti-capitalist. In fact, what they're saying is we want to be part of the system as opposed to attack capitalism, but we want black capitalists instead of European capitalists. And you know it's the one thing we have to be careful for as time has progressed. The If you were to go to Toy Bean Hall in London when they created social work, mm -hmm. when the rich felt it was necessary to infiltrate the poor so that they aspired through the tentacles of the rich that mm -hmm. had been spread out amongst them, that if you fought capitalism all day and you ended up not fighting the social service network, you would find there's another aspect that might not even pledge to be capitalist at all, might pledge to be helping the people. But most of the so social service networks are either financed by nonprofits, yes. churches, foundations, yes. the state. Yes. Cultural yes. affairs departments yes. of different colleges, I mean, yes. different cities. Some I mean, we can go down a whole list right. of funding sources. Right. So, in a final analysis, if we go after the capitalist system as a theoretical formulation, but pinpoint, as you say, with laser here, focus the specific corporations as a category to be assessed, especially in terms of the impact upon African people, like you say, the poor and standard and these multiple mm -hmm. bond associations uh -huh. that finance or definance infrastructure in our communities, and as capital is now going to Iraq and Afghanistan to build their economic and social structure at the expense of ours. There is a web. There is a web. There's sports. There's the media. 
Mm -hmm. They're education. Mm -hmm. They're social service. Mm -hmm. They're astronauts. <laughs> they're the church. Right. They, they are all of that. You're right. They are the secret societies, too. Yeah. And they all work in a loose-knit fashion, and they keep disagreements within a manageable limit. 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 Yeah. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, shout out to the brother, Steve Coakley. You know, I appreciate that. Um, what I'm going to be doing uh, for you all on the third one, be on the lookout for that. What I'm going to be doing is going even more further. I think it's best that I do it this way so it won't just be uh, one particular large video and I'm flooding you with a bunch of information. I like giving it to you this way so it could be, you know, you'll be able to better digest it. Um, so in the third one, we're going to go a lot further as well. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and shout out to the brother Steve Coakley again. You know, I know he was an Afrocentric, but definitely the uh, premises of his message was dealing with exposing the Boule gatekeepers because they are in the way. Again, I'm going to say that again. They are in the way. But keep in mind, I love you all. It's up. Okay. It's go time also. It's go time, Slim. We got work to do. We got some cleaning up to do within our own houses, okay? Within our own communities is what I'm referring to. These people are set to work against us. And yes, they do exist. This is not no, oh, we don't see these people. They don't exist. They are there. <clears throat> They're right there. And this is the reason why you're trying to figure out why you couldn't go but so far. You know what I mean? It's them doing that. That's it. I'm going to see you all next time. Uh, be on the lookout for other ones that will follow suit. Uh, go ahead and leave your comments down below. Like this video and share it with your friends and family members and those that will listen. What up? I'm just here to make you think.